And I'd like to welcome everyone to the PGO, PGA show Connect Spring Kickoff. And a welcome and thank you to our panelists. Just a quick note, those of you uh, PGA members who are watching this on demand, at the end of the session, you will need to take a five question quiz so that you receive your points for this session. So now I'd like to get started and have each one of our um, panelists introduce themselves. I'm gonna go in order of my screen, except I'm gonna start with Megan so she can introduce RepSpark as well to those of you who may not be familiar with what the platform is. So Megan, it's up to you. Great, thanks Tracy. Um, hello everyone, I'm Megan Butcher, the president of RepSpark. Uh, we provide a B2B e-commerce platform that includes order entry, digital catalogs, digital merchandising to enable wholesale brands and buyers to grow their businesses and streamline online ordering. Um, right now, golf is our number one vertical, so it's really exciting to be here, part of this panel today. Great, thank you. And Brendan. Hey everyone, Brendan McHugh here. I'm the Vice President of Sales on the East Coast for Summit Golf Brands, the home of Fairway and Green, Zero Restriction, Be Dratty, and EP New York. Great, thank you. And Susan. Thanks, Tracy. Susan Shade, and I'm the VP of Sales for Greg Norman Collection. Great. And Mark Thush. Thanks, Tracy. I'm Mark Thush, Director of Retail at Desert Mountain Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. We've got uh, nine shops total, including a, a custom club performance and fitting center, as well as a spa shop. And uh, been a PGA member for 25 years and an AGM member for nearly 20. And i um, pleased to be here. Thank you. Great, thank you everyone. Um, I guess I should say who I am. I'm Tracy Moffat and I'm a former president of the AGM and I get to host today. So I'm going to start on the company side. So Susan, Brendan and Megan, get ready. This is for you. How have you seen and had to adapt to selling becoming more digital over the last 18 months? And Brendan, you're up first. All right, thanks Tracy. Well, uh, the last 18 months, I think uh, the COVID uh, pandemic was an accelerant. A lot of the things that uh, we're doing now uh, were already trends that were starting to happen. I think we all agree we were in a uh, digital world prior to the pandemic and the pandemic just accelerated that even more. So uh, our customer interaction was already very digital, but now the selling process became very digital. And as a part of that, we had to increase our resources and time and effort that uh, we put into the, the support tools photography, video, things like that for our customers to support that process. Because at the time, uh, the, the old way of doing it with the samples and face-to-face -face interaction wasn't, wasn't something we could do. So uh, we've just now really started to hit that uh, curve of now making sure that we're putting our best foot forward with our digital presence, just as much as our presence out in the field and, and with our products. Great, thank you. Susan, how about at Greg Norman and also talk about Dunning and the other Thranko brands while you're at it. Sure. Um, for us, it was um, how to hit the ground running when it became very evident that in-person meetings were going to be a thing that um, was put on pause for several months. It became how do we teach our salespeople how to do this differently. Um, as a whole, they had embraced uh, the digital tool of RepSpark for order entry, but we certainly were not there as far as how do we push them forward into making sure that the tool is effective for them, as well as how do we educate them. And I was definitely one that was stomping my feet um, all the way up to the, the very top of our company and saying, how do we do this for them and how do we push this out there? And then it was an understanding for us next of, okay, now that we've taught them, they have some level of skill, here's what the tools are, how do we actually use this with the customers and get the customers to embrace it? So really all encompassing. And that was across all of our brands and all of our reps as they have multiple lines. Um, we, we hope we've done it well, but it, it was certainly a challenge out of the gate. Great, thank you. And Megan, share with, rep, with us about RepSpark. Yeah, I would say over the last um, 
12, 18 months, we've just seen a grow, a, a big growth in buyer adoption. Um, you know, it's easy for a brand to have their sales reps um, using these tools and these platforms, but we've seen more and more that adoption at these pro shops, at these retail shops, at these re resort shops where the buyers want to come in, they want to you know, shop digitally as well. Um, we've also seen a big turn in the use of the digital catalogs and the virtual assortments. Um, for a while, no one was traveling, so there was no other way to show a collection. Um, but now we've seen that transitions there. You know, buyers, you know, can shop a digital catalog the same as they could shop a physical catalog at one point in time. So even when they're with their sales reps, um, you know, Sometimes they're shopping digitally, even during those types of meetings. So again, we've seen a lot more comfort and um, transition on the buyer level. Great, thank you. Um, couple, one more question that popped into my head for Brendan and Susan. What have you done at your companies to streamline, enhance and strengthen your selling team to support this transition? So what have you had to do to get the reps to get it? And then the buyers. Uh, Susan, let's start with you. Certainly. Uh, for one, I had to learn it. I have to be the number one advocate. And that is definitely the key. And for us internally, we had other people that were kind of responsible for teaching the team RepSpark and what, what the new tool was and how to use it. But the reality is they're used to me being with them selling. So I had to be the one that was definitely first and foremost of here's how you do it. Here's how I'm going to teach you how to do it. And I've used it with customers, so this is the best way to go. Um, certainly a learning curve there, but within marketing as well, they had to learn a lot of different things and how to supply the assets to us that we were going to need for that, which is definitely different than a printed catalog. Do you still print a catalog? We do, and we do still get customers that are adamant that they have to have that paper catalog, but I can tell you from during COVID, the number of catalogs that required being mailed out to this season, the number of catalogs being mailed out, it's dropping and dwindling. So we're definitely seeing that shift. Um, we, we've always done an electronic catalog, but now the reps are definitely using the virtual catalog within RepSpark. Great, thank you. And Brendan, same question to you. Catalog and also what did you have to do with your selling staff? Yeah, uh, so the same thing. Uh, now also having having two catalogs and having a collaborative effort with the marketing team and getting them up to speed with, with the sales order entry system. So we've also complemented that with putting more resources and effort behind uh, photography, real life photography on form. So trying to move as far away from CADS as possible with our digital presence. Uh, also too with video content. And so each and every season getting with our designers and having them present the line and also to talk about some of the features on specific products. Uh, a brand like Zero Restriction is very technical and something we consider equipment. And so to be able to tell that story uh, online, uh, you know, who better than a, a, someone like our designer, Billy Dratty, to walk you through that with the video uh, if, if we're not able to get together in person. Great. Have you, um, as a sale on your sales rep side, put that hat on for a moment? Have you found it easy or challenging to learn? I think easier. Uh, you know, the, the the digital age that we live in and that we work in, uh, it makes everything we do easier. Change can be scary, uh, as we've learned and as we know. But if we have a, a, an embracing of what's going on and uh, educate to what Susan said of hey, how does this work? Because it will make my job uh, easier. It will also help my customer and, and buyers. Um, I would say that it's, it makes it easier for sure. Uh, the digital catalog and the adaptation with B2B from our customers has helped us do better business uh, in the last 18 months. Great. Right. Let's turn, turn to the buyer side of things. So Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot big time now. As a buyer, how has RepSpark and other B2B platforms changed your buying experience with those brands that use them? Uh, yeah, it's changed dramatically. We, um, you know, as I think back, uh, you know, we're on several digital B2B platforms that our different vendors use. I think we've been ordering, you know, Peter Millar was uh, out of the gates early in terms of using RepSpark. 
So that became the platform we're most familiar with and use the most often, um, at least in the beginning uh, year or two. Um, but it's, it's a game changer, it really is. And if, if there are buyers out there, PJ professionals, not taking advantage of these tools yet, we would highly recommend it. Um, you know, we still have, I, I feel like we're in that transition period between uh, physical catalogs, in-person meetings, and of course, COVID accelerating things, whereby um, now there's, as the sales folks were describing, now there's a, a mixture of the two that we rely on. But um, even when we have an in-person meeting, we have physical catalog, the RepSpark or the online B2B is a great resource for post-meeting. Um, it provides you with additional tools uh, and abilities to jog your memory about what you saw two, three, four weeks ago, and you're trying to remember from the notes in your catalog. Um, uh, but it's made things much more streamlined for us, much more real-time, uh, placing fill-in orders, et cetera, uh, has just made us a lot more efficient so we can pack more into our day, which uh, all of us need to do from time to time. Great. Megan, what specific tool has RepSpark developed, or tools, because I'm sure there's more than one, um, to support the shift for the buyers to digital? So from a buyer's perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think um, Brendan mentioned it. Just it's, it's, there's so much video now. There's so much where people want to be able to see something in real time. Um, you know, and it's, it's way more fun to do that in digital than a paper catalog. So really being able to integrate that um, digital presence, being able to integrate videos. Um, and then within the digital golf marketplace, um, within PGA 365 virtual events, being able to now um, embed and post these digital assets right into the buying process through that platform as well. So we worked with them to make that seamless and easy as well. Are those digital um, assets that you talk about, are those easily downloadable for a buyer to then put on their social media posts or if they did a virtual shop sort of? Yeah, so within the, the order entry tool, um, there is a way to download those uh, visual assets. Um, so if, you know, Mark wanted to sell um, one of these brands on his online store, um, he'd be able to download those assets directly. Um, as far as the video assets, no, those would just be um, image type assets. And then the ones that are posted in the PGA booths, uh, which are typically assortments, collection assortments, as well as digital catalogs, those can be exported as a PDF. And that, that's great. That's very helpful, I'm sure, to a lot of buyers. Um, Mark, has the digital made buying more, or how has it made it more visual, made it more immediate? And I'm sure it's made it more streamlined for you. And have you ever downloaded any um, images for your websites? You know, um, you are putting me on the spot because I have not, but um, <laughs> uh, cer certainly we have. Um, you know, we still rely on uh, some of our vendors. Um, you know, we have a spreadsheet that has all our login information for the different vendors where we can download um, digital assets. But um, quite honestly, I haven't done it on RepSpark yet. Um, so I look forward to um, exploring that. Um, but yeah, just as I mentioned, much more streamlined. Um, you know, one of my frustrations always was, or, you know, my early years as a buyer, I would definitely, when I viewed a collection, a color story, say, you know, I would select the items I was interested in, lay it out on the table with the sales rep, make the notes, and then I'm ready to go. You know, over my career, as I'm more, become more and more busy, um, I've gone to just taking notes in the vendor meeting within the catalog. I don't take the time to lay out the collection because I may want to decide some of that later. Um, but oftentimes when I'm writing an order, again, weeks later, sometimes even months, I, it's hard to visualize this shirt on this catalog page with this shirt four pages later. You can create these merchandise boards where you like the items uh, that you're interested in. Maybe you're looking at your catalog notes and you can 
put those on merchandise boards so you can see the whole collection and play with it uh, online right on your computer screen to get it exactly how you want it. So those kinds of tools. And then from there, you can easily click a button or two and transition uh, what you're viewing on your screen to an order or multiple orders, depending on different ship windows. So um, that functionality is built into the systems just makes it much more time efficient to uh, plan your buy and execute your buy. Great. Brendan, I'm gonna ask you to put your sales rep hat on again. The visual merchandising board that he's talking about, how has that made life so much easier for your sales reps? Yeah, and, and Mark hit on a lot of the same points uh, on our end. It, it makes it now a more collaborative experience. And so now uh, as the salesperson, I can collaborate and work with uh, a buyer or customer to help in the process that Mark was talking about. And so uh, now I can go in and put the assortment together. And as a follow-up, Mark, hey, remember we looked at this red, white, and blue color story out of the Made in USA line from Fairway and Green. You know, this is what you had chosen if you want to, just, just as a reminder. And so, um, you know, buyers, pros, uh, clubs are busy right now. Um, Mark and, and buyers wear a lot of hats. And as a vendor partner, if I can take a little bit of uh, a load off of um, the, the workload off uh, Mark's plate, you know, that's, that's what a good partner uh, would do. And so now I'm very much involved and can help in the process, which helps expedite it too, uh, which is, which is helpful also. I think that I love the idea of being able to have that merchandise assortment. Mark, that's got to make it so much easier for you to visualize what it's going to look like in your shop as well in that. And then the ability to place the order right from that. So are there some other features um, in RepSpark that you can use like within that then if you need information from your sales rep? Yeah, definitely. Um, just I just thought of a quick funny story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about Dunning specifically, uh, Susan. So um, about two seasons ago, I had my Dunning catalog. And, but you know, as we know, all, every vendor's catalog is different and set up different. And I ended up, I'm sure many of us have done this as buyers, you know, cutting out pages <laughs> and basically, you know, cutting out shirts and, and making my own little merchandise board out of this catalog. And I had pages flying everywhere and it was hard to put it back in my catalog file cabinet. So, you know, those days hopefully are coming to an end as yes. more, more and more vendors um, adopt these uh, digital tools. So yeah, um, RepSpark specifically, you know, they offer you a multitude of ways to view the catalog and interact with the catalog. You can view it exactly as the physical catalog appears you can view uh, more close up one page at a time. You can download the catalog. Um, you can, uh, you know, other things when you're creating that merchandise board. Again, you can like items. There's also, you know, some of us use stars in the catalog, check marks, whatever our notations are to indicate we like an item. Uh, there's a half star in RepSpark and a full star. So um, depending on how much you think you like that item, um, you can add a comment uh, to that item that you've put on your merchandise board to remind you of something. Maybe it's a special order for a member or a customer that um, you wanna remember to make a note in your purchase order. Um, lots of other tools, which uh, Megan can help me with, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, such a great resource. Um, and, you know, as we, for those of us who've been doing this for a while and you're, f you're very familiar with your vendor partners and the quality and the fabrication, it makes uh, a virtual presentation that much more feasible because as we know, the biggest challenge with a virtual presentation is you can't touch and feel the fabric, but, um, you know, once you know your vendor partner that well and their fabrication and their quality, you have a higher confidence level to do your buy right on the computer without seeing the line in person if you need to. Um, you know, I'm reminded the other really nice thing about RepSpark and um, 
uh, some most of the platforms is you can zoom in on on an item and get a close up of the fabric. Um, so that's huge in um, checking out the texture and the intricacies of the the different colors in the fabric. So um, yeah. Thank you. Since Mark got us talking about best practices on RepSpark, let's continue along that line. Um, I'm going to go to Susan next. Um, from the brand perspective of putting together your digital catalogs and advising reps and creating what uh, what's your best practice for RepSpark? You know, it was interesting for us to figure out where to go for best practice in a digital world because there really hasn't been a lot of precedent, especially within golf. So. I found myself calling a lot of my friends outside the golf business to say, well, how are you doing this? What's working and all of that. And I actually found us to be further ahead than they were in a lot of cases. So for us learning what best practice felt like, um, we kind of had to understand that we relied on Megan and her team definitely as to what that best practice might look and feel like. Um, often as we were going through the process, because it was strictly uh, learn, do, learn, do what's working, what's not. And I spent a lot of time uh, talking to customers, talking to reps, what's working, what's not working, how do we tweak it, how do we change it. And it's definitely that ease. Um, I find that whether it's a tournament, a staff, whatever it might be that I'm working on with a customer, I need to be able to do this on the fly. I need to be able to do it when I pull into the Starbucks, I need to be able to do it while I'm talking to them on the phone and have something into their inbox very instantaneously. So whatever I need to um, do for preset templates, which we did a lot of that and I still do every day for our sales team, I'm constantly presetting um, maybe an assortment that I'm getting a vibe that's kind of what's happening right now. I'll preset an assortment, I'll fire off the PDF out to the reps so that they know that that's out there then I'm sharing it so that they can go and take a quick look whenever I need some sort of a tournament thing that I'm doing. Anything that I create, I'm always sharing it with them so that they can copy and go. Copy and go versus start from scratch seems to be the real number one thing that we found to be best practice for us. That's a streamlining technique. Brendan, from the perspective of a salesperson, best practices from a sales rep. Yeah, it's uh, education and, uh, you know, working with your customer and also too, uh, to Susan's point, trying to educate yourself. Uh, this, this happened fast and it's something that uh, we all have to get up to speed on. And uh, so I wish every customer that I worked with was uh, as well versed on RepSpark as Mark is, but that's, that's not necessarily always the case. And so it's taking the time to uh, work with your customer and, and work through it, you know, a laptop comes into every appointment now because we're going to go into the B2B interface. We're going to show how to use the digital catalog and we're going to work through it together because I've already signed you up for all of this with a login and username and password prior to the appointment. So being prepared and collaborate together and, and trying to educate myself so that I'm the expert because I need to be the expert if I'm going to work with customers and try to get them up to speed as well. And educate them. Megan, how about from RepSpark, what have you, what would you say are the best practices that they haven't already covered? No, you can echo theirs. Yeah, I mean, I have some that are the same, but definitely, um, you know, inviting your buyers, um, you know, as Brendan said, having, you know, the, them already have a login, um, have them look at the collection before you get there. Um, but sending out that invitation to the buyers, whether you're usually using it through the, you um, the PGA virtual show platform or whether you're just inviting straight from your site, um, you know, inviting your buyers, making it exciting for them, making it unique for them, making it personal for them, um, which you can easily do by putting together, you know, assortments that is just for that buyer based on, you know, what they did last season, what you see selling really well based on um, trends that you're seeing in your geographical location. You can do all of that. Um, and it does make it personal for them. It, it lets that buyer know that you've, you've put in that thought and you've thought about them. And, you know, even if you come in with that, you know, preset template and add a couple things and say, you know, I put this together for you. This is what I think you're going to like based on 
you know, where you are, what you're doing, what you're seeing, um, you know, it makes it really nice instead of handing over a huge catalog um, to kind of already have a curated assortment. And then you can go back to the catalog. You can always go back to the catalog and say, hey, I didn't add these couple things, but now that we're talking, you know, maybe this blue group, this blue color story actually fits really well too. And because it's digital, you can just keep adding to that favorites list. So um, that's something that we see a lot of success about. Um, as Mark said, using those merchandise boards to visually show that, you know, story group or what that collection looks like um, by season, by delivery. It's so important um, because it does give you that visual representation with the ability to change it if you want to. Um, click of a button, you remove that one and you add this one. Um, so being able to see that visually is, is really important. Um, and then being able to you know, add directly from there and then confirm with the buyers with the customization, with that logo, with that placement, um, you know, with the color option of the logo. So not only being able to place that order, but also add that customization um, really helps with that best practice. So when the brand gets that order back, they're not having that second phone call. Okay, I got this. This is great. But, you know, on that pink shirt, since we're all wearing pink, you know, where do you want the logo? Um, you know, what color did you want the logo? That sort of thing. So really being able to streamline. Um, it was interesting. I, I had spoken with um, a salesperson who was totally new to this vertical. And within two weeks, he had opened, I think, 10 new doors. Um, it's, it's an accessories line. Oh, I think we just lost her. <laughs> So I'm going to go over to Brendan to continue on that idea of streamlining um, the business. Have you been able to, as a, a sales manager in your company, get faster at order entry and just um, improve your business for turnaround for customers because of the B2B sites? Yeah, uh, Megan touched on it, which I, I really enjoy is that, you know, now we can uh, comes with ideas. You know, salespeople are idea people. And so let's sit down and talk about uh, how we make the season impactful as partners and um, you know, have, a, have a business conversation of, okay, this is the, the time of the year that we're going to put this assortment. This is what it looks like. Here's how we're going to logo it um, so that we can sit down and, and have a, a little bit less about what's the contrast color in that stripe and more about, okay, how are we going to keep uh, you in business as long as we can throughout the season uh, and make sure that we're selling as much as we possibly can so that we both can benefit. So I would say that, uh, yes, it certainly helps streamline it where it's made the presentation more of a conversation and more of a business conversation as opposed to a presentation. Great, thank you. Hey. Susan, you it, um, Greg Norman and Franco um, in the, the back office, the order entry side of things, has that facilitated that and made that quicker and better so you can Get us our stuff, you know, yesterday. So, you know, we, we've been on RepSpark for some time and we gained that efficiency a, a long time ago on the back end of it. What I'm finding now is that reps are much faster at putting the orders in when, um, you know, Mark calls with a tournament or they've been going back and forth on something for an event. Right now, product is flying off the shelves. So it's imperative that every order go through very quickly. And I'm finding that reps, they can take two minutes, do key the order while they're on the phone and it's gone through and it's processing into our system much, much faster than we've really ever been able to do things before. But you know, whether it's a tournament or any of the event type functions that are in there, we find that those are really, really efficient where we were kind of sloppy and, you know, a little bit or a little bit archaic before. Yeah, great. Um, Mark, I'm going to go to you. Any other ways that it's in, improved the buying process, like for special orders is one I always think of when the buyer will email the rep who emails the company, who gets an email back, who email, you know, instead has, how has that enhanced that whole process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're reading my mind there. Um, it's just been so much more streamlined and efficient with our time. Um, yeah, we, we can all uh, recall those times, those frustrating times when we're trying to place a fill in order or check on availability. Just this last week, I, you know, our food and beverage department needed to order some uniforms that they needed here quickly. And, you know, 
one of the great features of these B2B uh, platforms is you can check real-time availability, you know, by SKU, by size, by color. Um, no more emailing the rep, calling, leaving a voicemail for the rep. Same with customer service uh, at the corporate headquarters of the vendor, waiting to hear back, um, being on hold. You know, I've got it at my fingertips right on the computer. Special orders, um, exact same thing. We can, while the member is waiting, we can quickly jump online, check availability for that item and confirm it uh, right in front of the member. So uh, it's an incredible time saver that, um, you know, if it got taken away from me tomorrow, I, I would be in tears, so. <laughs> That's awesome. Megan, welcome back. Is there anything you wanted to continue on your thought and add to about how you've been able to streamline processes for buyers? I'm not exactly sure where I popped off. Um, <laughs> did you hear the conversation piece about adding the customization and color options and logos. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um, the only other thing was I had, you know, I, I work closely with the reps just to hear kind of what they're, what they're seeing, what they're feeling, what would be helpful. Um, and it was interesting putting together those custom assortments and custom um, line sheets. One rep during COVID, um, it was a new accessories rep. He opened 10 new golf shops by simply putting together a custom assortment for them, um, like within two weeks, putting together a custom assortment, putting together a cover page. Um, he said each of them took about 10 minutes. It wasn't hard. Emailing them out, that buyer could click right on it, look at all the specs, look at a quick video that they had attached. Um, and, you know, so just, you know, being able to expand your reach very quickly and very efficiently, I think is something that a lot of the sales reps out there are finding um, very beneficial. Great, thank you. All right, let's conclude with talking about the learning curve because that's always fun um, and how you're now able to do business. So Susan, since you've been on it the longest, I think, I would share about the learning curve for you and then for your sales team and your inside sales reps as well. So for me, the learning curve was not extremely steep because I, I'm in it every day doing something, whether it's keying an actual order, which I do myself, or it's, you know, just putting together a quick sheet on something. Um, what I found was a lot of the new assets and tools that they were giving us were a bit more complicated and I needed to be very well versed. So, you know, COVID certainly gave us a bit more time <laughs> to um, learn those skills, which I did then teaching it to the reps was the next challenge. Um, our marketing department really was challenged with the whole system because they are the ones that have to give us the assets in order to create the catalogs and a lot of the different things within the system. They are not used to it at all. They're not as proficient as we are because of order entry. So that was certainly a bit of a learning curve. We're making good progress there. Um, with the sales team, I have found that um, I have 30 sales reps right now in the field and half of them I would consider very, very proficient. And I use them a lot in training other reps. Um, I certainly get on Zoom often and I'll, I'll set up half hour, 45 minute training sessions with one-on-one. -on -one. We've been through the multiple 10, 12 people at a time. We're now to definitely one-on-one -on -one so that I can really focus in on what it is they're trying to accomplish with a customer that they can't or having them give me examples of what's frustrating you today. Okay, let me show you how RepSpark Rep can make that easy for you. So the learning curve has, has definitely been there, but I feel like we are making huge strides. Um, I'm hoping that the learning curve on the buyer side is coming along much faster. Um, that to me seems like the really the next step for us. Now that the reps are comfortable, it's getting the buyers comfortable in using this platform so that we can really start to force the issue down this road a little bit stronger. Mark, over to you. How has it been for buyers to learn this? And do you prefer companies now that are on B2B platforms? Uh, yes, we definitely prefer companies that are on B2B platforms. Um, you know, as a, just a shout out to vendors, maybe who are watching that aren't yet, uh, we definitely feel like we do more business 
uh, with people that are on these platforms because it's just so easy to place a fill in order um, to book orders in the future, et cetera. So it definitely can grow your business um, uh, both ways on the vendor side and on the sales side. And um, sorry, the first part of your question was. How, how easy was it to learn? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on the individual. In general, very easy. It's very um, intuitive and user-friendly. You know, I think in, in large part, we're all experts because we're ordering in our personal lives off Amazon and from whoever else that we're purchasing from online. So um, much of it is exactly the same. So you have a comfort level coming in because of that. Um, you know, and it's, you know, I tend to be one of those people that I learn what I need to do and then I just go and I go on to the next thing, you know. Um, so it's good uh, to have a curious mind and come back in when you do have a minute of time and explore and learn about the other features and functionality that maybe you haven't taken advantage of yet, um, but that are uh, a great resource to you. Great, thank you. Megan, last 20 seconds to you. On learning curve? <laughs> I didn't think like to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we are, we're always here for you too. We're here for you to learn. We partnered with AGM to also really start to help educate the buyers on just making it easy and helping our brands to be able to educate those buyers on how to use the platform too. Great. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining us today. And I hope that those of you listening um, were able to get some great information and tips and can't wait to go back and dig into RepsPark. So thank you all.